this is my point. You've got to target guns, I'm and gonna, that's why stuff. Yeah, you definitely got to target guns, I'm going to agree with Emma, sure. but Emma's not going to agree with me. What? Yo, that's crazy. He said gun control for black people only by mass harassment campaigns by the police. He said gun control. Nah, I'm just racist. Let's see what happened. Because Tim Pool got like real f mad at, at certain points. I think he gets like very upset uh, when you make fun of his music is what I found out. I said, it, it sounds like a psyop to have this profile appear one day after the shooting where it's got like a bunch of screenshots on it or something. Uh, sure. It really does sound to me like someone told you to say things and you don't know what you're referencing. I'm not shocked that that is the only way that you're going to try to react to this. <laughs> to, to react to what? It, like, okay, no, this is fairly obvious. So I'm willing to bet Sam was like, hey, ask him about this and say these exact things. No, I things. came up with, I mean, Come up with original thoughts. Come Wait, can, on. It can is I my original thought. So no, it isn't. It's, it's some, guy, some guy posts a screenshot of one episode of a show he's not subscribed to, and you think that's an attack vector for something political, but it's a personal snipe that has no has no bearing on any of the arguments we've made the entire show. I, I disagree. Yeah, so you disagree with what? With I, what? Elaborate. I disagree that it has no bearing on what you've said throughout your entire show. Like what? What did I say? I, this was come what, on, come this on, come on. Let's, let's hear made. it. Let's hear it. I believe that your program appeals to a right-wing audience and there's a reason that the neo-Nazi shooter watched your program. And, and how do you know he watched the program? Because he posted about it. What did he post? Tim. What did he post? He posted uh, uh, parts of an interview that you did. No, he didn't. You're wrong. He had four <laughs> screenshots on his phone. From you the he did. He, he posted, a, didn't he post about like, was it pearly things or was it Nick Fuentes? Did he have Nick Fuentes on his? I think it was like, what was it? I don't even remember now, but he, he definitely did do that. He definitely had it on a playlist too. He he was that was absolutely that was absolutely something that he did. I'm pretty sure it was the Nick Fuentes interview that he did. did he had the don't even episode. know what you're talking about, and all you can do is laugh and no, say. No, it's because you get some specific guy, to obscure some the fact guy you posted one phone. thing one time, and that's the only argument you have. Did you go to the time codes that were in that episode? Because I did. I ran this down, and one of them was a clip of Elijah Schaefer, and like weirdly for this like neo-Nazi uh, Hispanic shooter, he like it's Elijah saying that we shouldn't be. He had a swastika race tattoo. specifically. No, no, he's a neo-Nazi Hispanic shooter. Right, but Tim called it a false flag and then corrected himself the next day and then said he thought it was funny after a mass shooting. I think that... I mean, <laughs> someone... <laughs> he looks so mad. What the f***? This is what the shooter posted. Oh, oh yeah, it is clipped. Tim Cass IRL, Putin drops the dollar, just pearly things. The the ten year old who got an abortion who was raped you call that a hoax have you retracted that statement? Uh, so there's very deep context to that. What we're talking oh, about when but I that's say been hoax. proven. I mean, charged. Right, right, so, the rapist so, has been charged, right, right. and the doctor who provided uh -huh. the abortion. Wait, there's deep context to that. I would love to hear what the deep context is. Emma, don't cut him off. I want to know what his deep context is for. Claiming that a 10 year old that got raped was a hoax uh, is the deep context that he found out that it was like, what was it? It was the parent and also uh, was it potentially an undocumented immigrant, if I remember correctly? So then it was like, well, then I changed my narrative because I can do propaganda differently. Abortion fine. So this is a really good example of the problem in the culture where I would say, see, you don't you don't know what I actually said because I, I I didn't say what you're what you're describing. You did. I just watched it last night. Right. And so what I said was the fact that they politicized this to win a political point is the hoax, not that the child was abused. How does that constitute a hoax, Tim? So like, let's say uh, oh. there's a, what's a good example of this? Uh, Ahmed Arbery. Ahmed Arbery is a really great example, right? So, uh, oh, so he just like doesn't understand. Yeah, it's possible that the little girl would not have been able to get uh, the services she needed because there's no way she could handle this pregnancy. It's sad that the life of the baby will be terminated, but probably was con probably would be considered to be not viable anyway. Now, look, there's a middle ground here, and I think Daily Mail hits on it. There there's a middle ground in this conversation about a 10 year old rape victim getting an abortion. Hmm. There's no guarantee she would have gotten the services, but hold on there a minute. Why didn't the left report the rape? Why didn't they go in Ohio to uh, uh, abortion services, Planned Parenthood? Why didn't they say we want a medical exception for this and make it a pressing public policy issue that they would have won on? I think the issue is the reason it played out the way it did, the reason 
reason it was not reported is that the left would have lost. I will say this. This one's not a clear cut hoax in the sense that someone made up a fake story. It's a hoax in the manufacture of the story to a certain degree. It is possible. The little girl would have went to the hospital and they would have said, no, you're carrying this baby. We won't do it. And the government would have said no. But I really, really doubt it. You think anyone in politics in Ohio is going to accept a 10 year old rape victim being forced to carry a baby? That is just so far beyond reproach. You can already see when the story was presumed to be false, David Yost says, well, you don't have to leave. We would take care of this. The, the left is, has done all of this stuff exclusively so they could get this story out there to make Ohio look bad. Mission accomplished. We did it, folks. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Reported the crime. If the left went to Planned Parenthood and said, we want the abortion, it would have happened. And there'd be no story. There'd be no PR campaign. You just said there would be a story if they made a story happen. Like as though, you know, you got beat reporters all around the fucking country looking for 10 year olds that have been raped and, and are looking for abortions. Like the fuck? What kind of situation is this? They're like, why didn't they know that this was happening? Why didn't the leftist news it was happening? Why weren't they in the room stopping the rape from happening? It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? At no part, at no part is there like a left that uh, played a role in this. It's just like national news covering a fucking story of horrific structural violence and it's understandable, foreseeable, and often warned about consequences. That's it. That's what happened here. They fucking openly said that it would happen and it happened and the right would have said see the system works imagine what would happen if the little girl went to a clinic and they denied her and then the left went look at what's happening that would have been a wait this is why the story is tim pool describing literally what happened while simultaneously claiming that that's not what happened and the news media is lying about it and then turning around and telling emma that it's like it's actually not a hoax that the little girl was raped but a hoax that like the media lied about the the circumstances. Powerful, powerful smack in the face of what was happening with these bills, with these heartbeat bills. There's a reason why they didn't try because the greater possibility was medical exemption. There's no rape kit. There were no criminal. Ch Dude, he's lit. Wait, no, he is saying it's a fucking hoax. He's saying that everyone's th that this is not real. Like this story never happened. He's saying there's no rape kit. charges. Not until now. Why didn't anyone, knowing this girl, report this? Dude, I'm sorry. This is, you said it was a fucking hoax. Uh, here's a, here's no, a- No, no, I'm talking about this example, though. Right, the right. One so, that I just brought up. So, right. If, if, if I can't explain to you that manipulating a story for political gain is the hoax, then I don't What's know what What's the manipulation? Say. Oh, man, this is an old story. I have to pull it up. I think the issue was that they were able to actually get the treatment in state, but because of the law, they decided to seek it elsewhere. And I said, that is a hoax. I didn't say that it was a hoax that the girl was abused. I said, you literally said there is no rape kit. Like you absolutely implied that given that there was no fucking rape kit and, and no other like coverage of the situation you literally said it was a hoax and also you also said you're disappointed that the left didn't weaponize this story earlier you said both of those things because that's how you operate you say things on both sides of the argument so you can always fall back to the other side when you are corrected also the fucking law says that that little girl can't get an abortion in the state of ohio even if the fucking parents never actually went to a a Planned Parenthood or never actually went to an abortion clinic and immediately went out of state to get an abortion, they're following the fucking rules. The idea that once these laws have passed and like these parents, uh, the, the, the mom is supposed to fucking uh, like put herself up for criminal charges to save the life of her child is the story. And the story would never fucking exist. The story would never exist if it wasn't for Republicans in the state of Ohio creating this law. I'm so confused, dude. If they could have sought treatment in state under the exemption, I think it was Ohio, right? There was an exemption yes. saying in the cases of abuse, the treatments are permitted, but they decided to make a public statement and leave the state anyway. I said, that is a hoax. It was not a public statement. Um, well, but the, that's my no, point. No, no, rape and incest exemptions are non-actionable. Um, this is like well documented with abortion activists. How long do you think it takes to prove a rape or incest case before you're able to use that carve out? Well, I, I don't, 
get in the book. Yeah, this is also the other side of the equation. Yeah, rape and incest, rape and incest cases are are impossible to fucking prove in the time frame that you can get an abortion. She's so good. She just popped off. Well, doesn't it I, depend on what, how the law is written? Do you have to prove it, or does it have to be alleged? I mean, first well, of all, let me, let rape, just is, that, rape is that one point of real the quick, so we can clarify the thing. On sure, I never said it was a hoax that the girl was abused. Okay. That is incorrect. But I mean, but yeah. You implied it. You definitely implied it. Honestly, this is a part and parcel of what you do is you put that kind of statement out there and then you put caveats in to protect yourself. Like um, but me that, saying that someone manipulating a story for political gain is a hoax. It's is not, not a manipulation. That is the kind of thing that's going to continue to happen as abortion restrictions <clears throat> happen throughout the country. It's an it was opinion. a particularly egregious example used to shine light on broader restrictions on abortion in this country. I mean, it's an opinion, but you haven't retracted yes. it. It's false. Uh, I'm, it's not false. If there is a story and the story is exaggerated or manipulated in an effort to sway people into believing one political faction over the other, you are engaging in a hoax. I mean, isn't that what you guys do when you post like extreme videos of crime and things like we that? Don't do that. What, do we, what, do we, what are you talking about? I mean, you respond to videos that are taken completely out of context, isolated instance, like instances. I don't think you watch the show because we don't do that. In fact, one of the points we make specifically is uh, you show subway crime to talk about all these inflated yes, so, so, crime numbers. And, crime and, is down in New York City in and, 2023 and, and, and by every down, metric. Down compared to what? Down compared to 2021 and don't, 2022. Don't change, don't change when, the subject. No, no, right? You, you I'm accused not. us no, no, of publishing minute, videos we don't minute. publish. If it's down in 20 compared to 2021 <laughs> and there was a giant year over year increase from 2020 to 2021, then you're talking about something it that's wasn't down. It wasn't giant. It was a small bump from the pandemic. A 47% increase in homicide in the city of New York is bump. not a small bump. It was homicides are have been on a precipitous decline since the 70s, since the 80s, okay. since the 90s. There was a bump because of desperation in the pandemic, There's... and now it's back down in 2023. So, like... That's irrefutable. That's the NYPD's own data. That's on all... Oh my God, she's so good! Major crimes, murders, rapes, Fuck. grand larcenies, so uh, this is robberies. A, this is an argument I'm often confronted with, and it's actually pretty terrible. So crime is down from the peak, for sure, right? In some years in New York City, we had 2,100 murders. I think that's the largest ever in the history of the city of New York. However, my standard isn't, it's not as bad as the worst time in the history of the city of New York. When I mm -hmm. see murders jump year over year from about 319 to 469. What do you mean year that's over year, a, the two years? Years that I just year listed? over year, as in from 2020 to 2021. That would be a year yes, over year yes. increase. That is a dramatic increase. And it's the largest since I believe 2010, the greatest year over year increase of all time in the city of New York, by the way. But it's all but the it's way back to 2010 again. numbers. It's down. Yeah, it's down this compared is... to the increase, but it's not down compared to 2019. This was a once in a lifetime pandemic where people's desperation and their mental health was severely harmed. Um, people were out of work. And that kind of Desperation leads to more crime. That's the reality of how crime works. Um, Poverty leads to crime. This I is, would imagine this that. Is so inaccurate. Me, why do you think uh, 25 people got shoved in front of trains last year? I don't know, dude. Well, <laughs> That's a what? question. You're saying that uh, you're saying poverty and desperation results in crime. I'm wondering why it is that you've had these uh, uh, these homeless guys that have been predominant. I think it's almost entirely these homeless guys shoving people in front of trains. Last year it was 25, and so that that is so a that's a mental health problem. I mean, we have a we do have a mental health problem in this country. We have an issue okay. with not having socialized health care, where people are unable to access health care, mental health care in particular, but also every other kind of health care. I mean, 28 million uninsured people in this country. That's a massive problem. I mean, what do you? Yeah, what, problem. what is your stance on Medicare for all and healthcare? I'm, I'm for universal healthcare. Oh, you are. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think I think we'd have to have some kind of like basic coverage for universal uh, universal standard. Meaning, like, if you're having an episode, this is particularly where we bring you when we help you. If you're sure. uh, broken bones, flu, things that it's like relatively simple is that we got limited space, we got limited doctors. But you know, I don't think we can function as a society if we have people just dying in the streets. XVX like column with, with the twenty. And, you know, well, then we should. You should promote housing first policies on your program. Like in Houston, <clears throat> what they did, there was a pilot program under Obama. Like, it was a HUD grant. And they reduced homelessness by 63% over 10 years because they guaranteed housing. Do you think that the 25 examples that
that you cite last year and there's like over 2 million subway riders a day so mm. you cherry picking that i feel like is i hear a lot of talk often after ma mass shootings that mental health is the most important thing in this country mm. then we should have socialized health care so everyone can have access to it um and that would that paired with a housing first policy where cities don't become urban centers for just bridge and tunnelers who want to come in and see a show or for restaurant associations where places where people can actually live and there's guaranteed housing for people if we were able to do that we would be able to drastically reduce the crime that you guys were talking about here. so when you're talking about poverty leading to crime like what is that based on because after prohibition was repealed All wait this motherfucker is not over here stating that like poverty is not linked to crime right he's not gonna say that there's no shot that is the that's cool i like that actually you know what i take it back I like that. I think that's cool. You just like look at things that are, uh, that, that have been proven time and time again historically and just say, nah, super base. He's actually saying the rich are the criminals. No way. Wait, really? No shot. He's not going to say that. All right, let's see. Human history. During the Great Depression, crime fell. During the Great Recession, people with your line of thinking thought we would see a crime spike nationwide. It didn't happen. You can actually look at the crime wave if you wanted to pull it up. That didn't occur. And that was the largest recession in the history of this country since the Great Depression. So what we've seen throughout American history is poverty not leading to crime. What we actually see is the opposite, that crime drives areas into poverty. We look at store closures across the country due to the fact that we have shop. Wait, what? Okay, hold on. <sighs> you can't do this. You can't just like uh, uh, point to one faulty instance, which I don't even know what kind of data he has to back that up really, and just overlook every single every single study conducted on this okay yes i definitely did rape and pillage and thus my community is poor why did i rape and pillage who cares he's saying rich the rich person's poverty doesn't create crime i okay hold on i need to understand what he's trying to fucking this is this is this is new uplifting Let's, that leads to decaying in the neighborhoods when people <laughs> abandon the neighborhoods and so why is that happening someone needs to understand someone needs to ask him why does that happen like who is shoplifting and why are they shoplifting to begin with if there is a shoplifting happening does it that materialize because like they're bad people or does that happen on its own is it like our parents educating them to say like shoplifting is great um he's playing with anomalies in the stats yeah like how but also he hasn't answered that part of the the question he said like, two minutes ago the last bit of crime spike was in 2010 and then he said the 2008 crash didn't cause more crime he's saying crime Crime makes businesses close and people become poor because of that. He's defending capitalism in the most stupid way. Okay, but like, but like, why did the original crime happen? He, I get that he's saying poverty doesn't cause crime. Crime causes poverty, right? And it is true. Crime does cause poverty, just not the fucking crime he's thinking, okay? Like criminal misconduct from those who have almost full control over how society operates is why poverty does happen at a massive scale. It's corporate monopolization. It's, it's you know, a lack of trust busting from the federal government these are the reasons why the structural violence of poverty is is a thing that happens so he would be kind of fucking cool uh if he was making that argument he's like yeah crime is the reason why poverty happens but it's not the crime you think the crime you think petty crime shoplifting and the like maybe even grand larceny and and the violent crimes associated with um uh, uh, certain communities like poor communities that is a consequence of the uh criminal misconduct that is not necessarily considered criminal. So I do agree with that, but I don't think he's saying that. I think he's probably just trying to do a 1350 type situation. And you see this blight that has a psychological impact on people and that drives- But like, I'll be honest, if he dropped that on me mid convo, I'd be like, what the fuck are you saying? Like, uh, I, 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 cause sometimes it, it takes a while for you to fully grasp. When, when you're debating a right winger, most of the time they're NPCs using fucking talking points that I've heard a million times over and know how to add adequately address um but sometimes but sometimes you got motherfuckers like this guy where they just say something so out of pocket so entirely uh 
just looking at the face of of all matter of empirical evidence that suggests the exact opposite and and just hit you with this curveball where you go whoa what the fuck and that's actually kind of scary because when you can't address that adequately when you don't even fully grasp the the creative new lie that someone is telling you uh, uh whether it be uh you know make taking advantage of cherry picking and taking advantage of like some absurd uh moment in time right uh you might not be able to adequately address it in that moment like we finally i still arrived at that uh conclusion i just had to understand exactly what he was saying right people to commit these crimes i mean you're working backwards from the no you're massive. actually working backwards wait, 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 but no no poverty clearly this is a very simple concept leads to something like shoplifting why would someone shoplift based on the personal pathology they're shoplifting because they're desperate not necessarily like so we have a lot yeah. of lax shoplifting laws in california for example so they're and doing what they just find is we have a lot of organized retail theft because there's no consequences for it. That's profit. For, for I mean, instance, it's not... there people are trying to make money. Well, so, and so... they're desperate, and we have we have untold levels of income inequality in this country. Well, since is it the income late inequality or since poverty? the late '70s, nine. Oh, it, that is true. Income inequality is uh, is is more significant than poverty in and of itself. I mean, income inequality and poverty go hand in hand. But like, yeah, in order to steal, there has to be a have next to a have not. You know what I mean? So. So that that component is correct. That component is correct. Crime happens when uh, when when structural violence of poverty uh, is is impacting poor communities. Okay, who then will your neighbor doesn't have shit either. So that's why that's why it happens in the way that it does. Hundred percent. That's the increase in CEO pay versus twelve yeah. percent for the working class in this country. That's you don't think bad. that that leads to levels of desperation? I'm so wait, wait. Is work. income inequality the cause or is poverty the cause? Because those are two different things. Uh, I mean, they... What? No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Income inequality is is not separate or removed from poverty. Income inequality implies poverty, okay? What the fuck? Income inequality does not talk about like an even scale where everyone is like rich or omega rich. No one is talking about that, okay? No one is talking about that. That is so stupid. That I, as a matter of fact, they would say very, there's very little income inequality in a situation where like you have uh, a a comfortable middle class and some some wealthy people on top of that as well like a like a fat chunk of the middle class plus some wealthy people and some poor people on the other side would mean that there is less income inequality that's what they would fucking talk about that's that that's an, a great indicator that there is less crime overall as well you go hand in hand they really don't yes they do because all Not the wealth all. is going towards the CEOs and to the billionaires in this country but it's not a zero-sum economy down. but what, 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 I, I what, what but, but also if income inequality is the driver of crime, then how come we saw a giant crime decline after the mid 90s when income inequality was going up? In fact, we saw this happen all the way to 2019. Can you repeat that? We had a giant crime decline from around 1995, 1996 nationwide from uh, all the way to 2019 while income inequality was rising during that period of time. Right. So why would that occur if income inequality is driving crime? I mean, I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure you're the expert, but I do know that you were saying that there was an increase in crime in 2021 and 2022 well, and it doesn't matter now that it's going back this. down to 2023 levels this um, is just new york I can't city see this. yeah i just pulled up new york city look at that right exactly so in the at, at in at the start of 1990 crime was at its highest and it dropped this is where she's supposed to hit the classic dude i'm surprised emma didn't hit the classic sam cedar well, uh, there's a lot of, I, I can't do a Sam Cedar. There's a lot of different uh, evidence on this, but uh, you know, uh, leading theory is uh, lead in, lead poisoning. <laughs> Guys, about I mean, crime dropped everywhere throughout the country since lead gasoline was outlawed. There oh, was yeah. a map. Okay, so he's gonna say, what is the what is the counter to this? The lead gasoline. The counter to it is actually uh, uh, what like fucking. It's not that big of a decrease uh, in uh, where you you add a control factor. It's that's what he's probably gonna say. He's gonna be like, you activated my trap card. Massive connection lead paint, lead gasoline, predominantly affecting poor and lower income people, um, which probably did contribute to some of the increase in volatility in that. Well, that, 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 I, agree, I completely agree. I read that report. It was fascinating that when we started taking lead out of the atmosphere, yeah. crime started to drop. But that would also arg make the argument that it's not poverty driving crime. It was like chemical. What communities have lead? What communities are more frequently utilizing lead? What communities had cheaper substitutes? Imbalance or something. Right. I, it's both. It's you, absolutely both. Well, I think it would, it, it, I think it would play 
a role, like the lead would play a role because it was in gasoline. So it was in right, the air. air and yeah. So it's impacting and we know everyone. It's, it depresses a uh, uh, brain function and things like that. True. From 1960 all the way to 1979, the incarceration rate, even it though is. in raw numbers it was rising, was dropping per capita. So we saw this crime increase and you would, what you would end up getting in 1979 for murder on average was something like five years. For rape, it was something like 3.4 years. And obviously, like this created a problem because we just weren't prosecuting people. This is why we ended up going with a mass incarceration solution, which, by the way, did work. And all these other policies <laughs> to get tough on crime. You laugh, but you're definitely No, I wrong. mean, mass incarceration. We incarcerate more people than any other country. We have the highest rate of violent crime for any modern Western country i mean i i don't have that statistic in front of me but we still have not so how does that connect to the mass incarceration point if it worked then what does the violent crime rate have to do with it you just want to warehouse more people no i didn't say uh, for uh, when i say it worked we had an ex bros pro crime pill in the crime bill in the year of our lord it's just funny to say that we have the highest we have the highest violent crime out of any developed nation and then simultaneously say uh mass incarceration works because we also have the highest rate of mass incarceration out of not just the developed world but literally the third world even so like if that was a demonstrable success then the united states of america would be like japan you know what i mean a fucking crime free society supposedly which japan isn't but you know i'm just saying that i'm embellishing for the sake of argument okay ask the yakuza those dudes got fucked up those are rookie incarceration numbers you got to get those numbers up this is the one guy who reads the data but is purposely obtuse with his interpretation Interpretation, but it doesn't it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense at all because if mass incarceration was a demonstrable success then in the united states of america we would have no fucking crime we started expanding the prison population seriously in the 1980s to the 1990s. If you go to the Brennan Center for Criminal Justice, which is a left-wing organization, they say post the year 2000, mass incarceration lost its effectiveness. But most of the mass incarceration was pre the year 2000. So obviously it had some impact and it well, ranges. Low estimates are about 6% on the crime rate, which is very low, but the high estimates are about 30%. And the reason it worked is because the philosophy behind mass incarceration is pretty simple. What you're trying to do is incapacitate criminals because the same criminals are often reoffending. You brought up shoplifting earlier. You can actually pull up an article to find out that the same 300 people in New York City represent a third of the shoplifting arrests total for a single year. Probably because this they're is because they're repeat impoverished offenders. and they need to find a way to actually sustain their livelihoods in this country. That, we don't I mean, have that's, a, that, that, but that's that's pl that's put a very good way. Uh, that's that's, yeah. that's that's phrased very well to maintain their livelihoods. Well, so, no, I mean, I, no. Their life is a better way to maintain. Sure, sure, it. but like, I, I guess my point is, some of them certainly are desperate. But yeah. when you see videos of a guy like shoveling stuff into a garbage bag, that's not desperation. But again, this is what you do, Tim. You return to anecdotal examples. We're when I'm trying people. to talk about, we're talking about just the 300 people. I, 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 and I am talking, which is about, the anecdotal uh, evidence. What what 300 people? He said the yeah, same the, 300 people, the ones committing the crime. I said, the right, third these, of the shoplifting. These specific in New York City. individuals are doing it for profit. Okay, so we should have a system of mass incarceration because there are 300. Well, I didn't say that. Because I, I'm talking to you now. There are 300. If the system doesn't care about you, of course you will abuse the system and recommit crimes. Yeah. They're also making an insane point. If you need toilet paper, why are you stealing iPhones? Yeah. It's one of my favorite. It's one of my favorite uh, takes because it's like, bro, you know how many fucking, you know, it, it, people always say not. I, I won't even use the toilet paper one. I'll use the bread, right? If you're hungry, why are you? Why are you not stealing bread? Why are you stealing a Louis Vuitton bag? And it's like, bitch, you think they're going to eat the Louis Vuitton bag? You know how many fucking pieces, loaves of bread you can buy with a Louis Vuitton bag? Dumb ass bread goes bad after a while but if you fucking steal a television or if you steal a fucking louis vuitton bag you can buy loaves of bread for a very long time okay the fuck Plus, loaves of bread can't pay for the fucking rent either. Repeat offenders? No, no, we should incapacitate re repeat offenders so they stop offending. Got so it. If so you're this is arrested, all about the fact that you're, you're not in for favor of bail reform because we, in, in New York State, which is now currently being rolled back, in uh, we decided that we weren't going to require cash bail for nonviolent felonies and for misdemeanors. And you think that that's a good policy? To not require cash bail? Yeah. Uh, no. I, I mean, think, or that, I think... or that, that, that we're rolling it back. 
think, think I think policy. look, if if you're concerned about people not being able to get out of jail because of their financial means, then I can understand reducing or even eliminating the cash bail system. Because I understand if you don't have a lot of money, even though you really only have to throw down 10% for bail in most cases, unless it's a, you know, like a set figure for the bond. She should turn around and say incapacitate. Seems like an interesting term to use. Uh, okay, what if you permanently incapacitated someone when they did a crime, like by, you know, engaging in capital punishment, which is allowed? Um, in that case, like, do you think that that is valid? You know, what's the what's the ultimate goal here? Then I get that argument. But what you Hold need, on. and the state of New York desperately needs this, is some kind of threat assessment. Like, you should be able to hold somebody if they present themselves as a danger or a repeat of, of bail without bail so that they don't continue to reoffend. Okay, but do you know what happens when people are held in Rikers, for example, as a, in a pre-detention center? How many deaths have happened there before they're even committed of a, or convicted of a crime? Look, there, again, that's an issue for how the jailing system works in New York City, and I am in favor of building out the jail capacity. Because You're talking one, about cash bail, though. That is exactly uh, that is exactly yes. the point that we're discussing here. Yeah. Right. So you're in favor of people being held before they're convicted of a crime. Yes. In Rikers. If, even if they show a propensity to reoffend, 100. percent What is a propensity to reoffend? Um, a history like being arrested over and over again, prior convictions. Yeah. So you think that they should be held in a prison that has been? It's a jail, but yes. A, yeah, or jail. Excuse me. A jail that has been proven to be one of the worst conditions in the country. Well, it doesn't have to be Suicides, specifically Rikers Island. Dozens of deaths just this year, even if they haven't been committed of a crime. Convicted of convicted a crime. Convicted of a crime. Uh, yeah, for sure. But I think... But I th that's very anti-constitutional and anti How is it anti-constitutional? Um, the Fourth Amendment. It violates the Fourth Amendment. Protects you from illegal search and seizures. Well, I mean, you are the, the right to a speedy fifth? trial. People are held I do I'm think, sorry, Fifth Amendment. Yes. I do think we should I, have I, I, reform I, I, yeah. on the on the speedy trial side. But the idea that it's unconstitutional to hold somebody pre-trial is ridiculous. Our law is based on English common six. law. Six. Damn. Uh, six. Yeah. There. We're all bad. Our law is yeah. based on English common law. And the the reason we have jails is that you would actually be held in a dungeon awaiting trial. So it's like built into the system. Bail is like a courtesy. It's actually a progressive reform in response to that, where you lay down some kind of capital in place of yourself. How so the idea, bro, what, what's next, bro? Is he going to advocate for Iron Maidens? Like they used it. Guys, you don't understand under common law, um, you know, the Vikings also utilized the blood eagle method, which was a very successful and significantly more successful measure of like, uh, lowering reintegrate i mean uh lowering recidivism rates when you fucking ripped out the lungs of uh i don't know like the village idiot uh from behind and made it look like eagle uh wings you know this was a very successful thing so we should probably do that uh you know seems like a good idea we should do the iron maiden as well uh the the progressive stance adopted in the fucking 14th century <laughs> He's like, he's like talking about progress, uh, criminal justice progress. <laughs> and when, when it, whenever the fuck uh, th this this was uh, first implemented, that's crazy. <laughs> How many do you want to spend on jails in New York City? As much as it takes. So just warehousing people before they're convicted of anything. Well, it, again, it's not warehousing everybody, but if you have a propensity to reoffend, I think judges should be able to have judgment. It's kind of in the name and assess these people and hold them. So you just want to give it to the judgment of the judges and it doesn't yes, i would like the judges to have judgment yes okay but there should be guardrails in place to prevent judges from i mean judges are human beings they can be unjust as well i don't really put them well you, the could, you could ob you obviously i'm not in favor of like a million dollar bond for somebody who's arrested for shoplifting even if they're arrested 27 times so yeah you can have guardrails from the legislature but they can't assess dangerousness right now in the state of new york they assess it in ways the reason we put this law into place which is now being rolled back that were deemed inherently racist they how deem so? that th th it was uh disproportionately black and brown people who are okay but how's that racist though because at their discretion it was put into it, it was implemented in a racist way it's but the same way the that stop and thank you 34 well, you MKD, so, so, black you're, and so this is what the reality is for you is you believe that black and hispanic people inherently are committing when did i say inherently crimes. i mean th this if is you pull up like nypd crime data for instance since you brought up stop and frisk you can look at the shootings like the shooting suspects in any given year and if you find me a year where 92 
50% or greater is not black or Hispanic in terms of the shooting suspects, then, then I mean, I would be shocked because I've looked at it oh, for the, the past suspects. 20 years. So yeah, that's suspects. the cop's discretion. So no, you- no, it's you get a report right? and you get a description of the suspect and they are 92% every single year or above black or Hispanic. Can I, can I tell you guys a very famous New York story? There was a uh, wait. No, what? no, you don't interject at that point. My man, my man is literally just what the fuck. He just he did the thirteen fifty, but with like additional additional elaborations. First of all, the reason why stop and frisk was fucking implemented was literally to. Here's two things he did. Okay, are you ready for this? Here's two things that are really fucked up about this. He's playing fast and loose with the data. The reason why uh, stop and frisk was implemented was to. Um, the reason why stop and frisk was implemented was to target guns in the city. Okay. Yeah. He didn't even say 1350. He said 1392. Okay. Like it's not even crime data at that point. And even if you were looking at crime data, those are, uh, those aren't even like clearance rates. Those aren't convictions. Those are just, uh, arrests. Okay. 1350 is just arrests. He didn't even do 1350 arrest data. He did 1392 with suspect data. Okay. Like the famous 1350 isn't even good to use as a fucking metric for anything because it's not actual criminal convictions. It's quite literally just arrests, okay? Arrests. So the fact that he went from, the fact that he did not 1350, but 1392 is fucking insane, okay? That's wild. (laughs) Ay, ay, ay. Oof. Uh, but, uh, interjecting here, Tim interjecting here with the anecdotal story is fucking crazy. Cop. And, uh, he went to Central Park and started giving out tickets to white couples having picnics and drinking wine. And he said public alcohol consumption is a crime in the city. And he started giving these uppity yuppies tickets. Right. He got in serious trouble. The reason he did it was because the cops would go into the black neighborhoods and give people drinking 40s on their stoops tickets. And he said, how can, how can these people at their own homes on their own porches get a ticket for drinking booze? Then when I go into Central Park and say, we're going to apply the same standard, I get in trouble for it. So New York's got serious problems. Even, even, uh, Bloomberg, like that guy's awful. He made a, he made a bunch of like, I, I'm, I'm but, not going to say but that. The reason, I just want to cut you off because you mentioned Bloomberg and I want to respond to what you said. Under Bloomberg, 90% of the stop and frisks that were done were, by the way, they didn't find anything, but 90% targeted black and brown people. So it's, you're taking- So the, the you're highest taking, number, no, by no, the way, no, no, is 86%, no, no. Taking, not 90%, you're taking but go You're taking the ahead. data, you're taking the data and using what the cops did where they over police in certain areas and then pretending like there's an over-representation inherently criminally in those current kinds of populations and it's it's okay. a racist argument so you're wrong in a bunch of different ways so let me just like run through them so first and foremost the highest year was 86 percent, and that was the year with the dramatic increase in stops and if you ask me if i'm in favor of just expanding stop and frisk which is different from giuliani stop question and frisk although you know you might not be interested in that specific difference to the levels that bloomberg did i would say it's unnecessary it aggravates people it creates a whole bunch of problems that being said here during the entire 10 year Bloomberg, where the shooting suspects were any less than 92%. So what the NYPD does, because it's the most data-driven police force in the entire world, Uh is they map crime through a system called Comstat. When there's a lot of shootings in a specific area, they send the police to those areas. The stops, questions, and frisks all relate to where the shootings are, and it just so happens to be the- That's fucking bullshit. That's not. He is literally claiming that the NYPD is operating okay here's what he's doing he's making it seem like the nypd is operating in the immediate aftermath of a fucking shooting that happened in a particular neighborhood and that's why they're doing stop and frisk measures there that is a lie it is a never-ending permanent occupying state okay that's bullshit that is absolute fucking bullshit He's making it seem like the NYPD only does stop and frisk whenever the fuck uh, a shooting happens. It's like, no, that's not real. That's literally not real at all. No, you're lying to try and make it seem like it is perfectly valid to engage in stop and frisk in black neighborhoods by saying it's because that's where the shootings are happening. Look, look look at where the shootings happen in New York. That's why they're doing it. 
It's bullshit. And I've heard it a million times over. He just adds like additional seasoning. This is this is his style, it seems, uh, that uh, he takes like very common uh, right-wing arguments and adds like a little bit of a spin on it. So it comes across like a little bit more different than what you have experienced, where you've encountered before. Those areas are black or Hispanic. Right, but, and but, by the but do you get accosted on the street by cops regularly in New York City? I, it happened to me when I was younger, yes, but like not okay. now. Okay, but do you understand- but, but to your point about hit rate, how, because you brought it up, hit rate was not the goal of stop, question, and frisk. Like, this is one of the things where you're yeah. like, no, uh, no, he he is, I think he's doing that. I don't think he's saying that. He's saying that they do stop and frisk in neighborhoods where shootings happen, not right after shooting. It is stupid because it doesn't work well to catch people who shouldn't have weapons and aggravates people who are innocent. Um, Yeah, that second part is true. No, but I do think that, I do think that he is trying to, he's, I think, trying to get people who are on his side to come to that conclusion. Because I've heard it a million times over, the idea like, well, they're doing stop and frisk in areas where shootings are happening, and that's why they're doing it. But he made it seem like, uh, you know, they go right after. Uh, they go right after a shooting. Like, he's just trying to make it seem as though uh, the NYPD has to be there doing stop and frisk when it's a permanent state and not immediately in the aftermath of a shooting. Which, by the way, even if it was racial profiling immediately in the aftermath of a shooting, it would still be bad police work. That's not how you're supposed to fucking do police work. You can't do, uh, like cattle calls okay uh, on on an entire population on the uh, basis of their skin color like it's fucking ridiculous oh well this program didn't work because my standard that i look for arbitrarily shows that it was ineffective that's like saying a plane doesn't work because it's not a good submarine no, it's like not that doesn't arbitrary. make any sense 90 percent of the stop and frisk came up with nothing true but the point was to so deter say, the say carrying of doing, firearms say have you done well, illegal drugs in your life uh, maybe I just I, I have that. I have I could have been stopped and frisked and I could have gone to prison or I could have been held if I had a little bit less money in Rikers indefinitely until my trial came because a cop just decided hey I'm gonna stop and frisk you but they wouldn't do that to me because I'm a white woman right, that's nice well, but me, anyway it's just... about shooting no, you, you, and the point of the program no, and this is GMs. stated quite literally to deter people from carrying illegal firearms and, and, yeah and it was a fucking okay then it was a demonstrable failure that was part of the reason why they had to stop it because they literally never actually got guns off of black people for the most part they found more guns on white people than black people what the fuck is he saying the sign you say demonstrable too much i like that word fuck you yeah, it was just a sustained harassment campaign in impoverished neighborhoods. And, Absolutely and I'm gonna, not. And I'm gonna, it 100% is. Are you in favor of gun control? I'm not a New so Yorker, we, so I'm not like a big gun no, 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 guy. No, no, but, 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 but let me. This we've is my point. We've got to target guns. I'm gonna, and that's why stop Yeah, you definitely got to target illegal guns I'm going to agree with Emma, but Emma's not going to agree with me. What? Yo, that's crazy. That's crazy. He said gun control for black people only by mass harassment campaigns by the police. That's an insane thing. He said gun control. Nah, I'm just racist. That is what the fuck? That's that. He just fucking he just got clapped right there, dude. It's like gun control. Nah, I'm not a big fan. I'm just a fucking racist, actually.